Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to work together to make sure your word gets out today. Yes. We ask that you will bless us, Lord, to find peace, even in the midst of doubt, even in the midst of storms, even in the midst of peace. Sometimes we can lose our peace. And so we just ask that you will encourage us, build our faith as we turn our eyes towards Christ. Lord, may we learn and grow and share what we get from our study today. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, family, let's go back and let's do some time traveling because we're going to go back to the time uh, where Jesus came to the world. He lived. He walked the earth, his ministry for three and a half years or so. And then that led to him going to the cross for you and me. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross. On what day did Jesus die? Bible quiz. What day did he die? He died on Friday. What did he do on Sabbath? Rest. He rested in the grave. And then what happened on the third day? Rose. He rose again. That's, that's the day we are. The rose day. The resurrection day. We're on that day right now. So we're going to go to John chapter 20. I want to invite you to join us. Just turn to John chapter 20. And it's there in John chapter 20 that we're going to see this story. Because this story is our hope. And so from this hope, mm -hmm. there are a lot of lessons to be learned. Jesus died on the cross. And when he died on the cross and rested on that Sabbath, he rose again from the tomb. And when he rose, he rose. We normally would just say, we won't just say Sunday morning. What do we normally say? It's time. It's time. We'd say he rose on the first early mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about most songs. I say early Sunday morning. That's oh. what happened, right? But the story and what we're about to look at in John chapter 20, this happens late Sunday night. So early Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the grave. And you're going to see why. Because there in John chapter 20, we're late Sunday night. Look at what it says in verse 19. It says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week. The reason why this is important, because now Jesus has risen from the grave and a few people have seen him. But at this point, those who are assembled here in verse 19, they have not. Because it says, when the doors were shut, mm -hmm. where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto him, what were the first things that he said to them? He said what? Verse 19. Peace, Peace be, be unto you. you. So now here's where we are. We're at the point now, late Sunday night, Jesus has been resurrected and he goes to visit his disciples. Were the disciples out in the streets looking for him? No. Were they running around telling everybody? No. They it's, were hiding. It says they were hiding. Mm -hmm. Why were they hiding? It says in verse 19, for fear. Mm. Fear of the Jews. They were afraid of the people who put Jesus to death because now, who, thinking logically, who else is probably going to get put to death? His disciples. We believed in him. So they're probably mm -hmm. going to come after us. So they were hiding. They were afraid. But Jesus comes to them. In fact, it goes on to say in John chapter 20, he does a whole bunch of other things, even before he left and ascended to his father. But we're looking now specifically at that time frame, late Sunday night, and to what happens for the next eight days. Mm -hmm. There are a few points that we learn in this story in John chapter 20. And the first point that we want to get from what happens there during those eight days of unbelief is that Jesus knows exactly how we feel. Mm -hmm. We saw how Jesus showed up. But what was his attitude? What is his mentality? And why did he show up in the first place? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the Bible. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. How are the disciples feeling? After Jesus left and he showed himself to the disciples here in John chapter 20, Thomas shows up. He was not there. And when Thomas hears of what happened, can you read verse 25? What does he say? The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. The first point of peace, mm. because it's easy. The goal of this study is not just to say, you're a Christian or you believe, you better have peace. When I just commanded you go say, you should have peace. You're supposed to have faith. No. 
Where is Thomas here in verse 25? How is Thomas feeling based on what we see here? Doubtful. Doubt. Mm -hmm. How else is he feeling? Unbelieving. Stubborn. We're going to say, Jai. He's not trusting. He's not trusting at all. And you know what's interesting? When you read about this in the testimonies in the Desire of Ages, he's also feeling another emotion. He's feeling jealous. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about that. They come to him after he comes later and they say Jesus showed up. Now, Thomas knows he was not there. So when he hears that he showed up when he wasn't there, Thomas is actually a little jealous. He's envious that he would come while he wasn't there. Well, actually, this kind of pulls off of what we've been reading all week. And um, one thing that we've been studying all week with Jael and the whole family mm -hmm. is the fact that Jesus had to constantly show the disciples the entire time of them working and walking together mm -hmm. um, to stop arguing and bickering amongst each other. Mm -hmm. And they were constantly always arguing about who was better than the other, who was greater than the other. Who is Jesus going to uh, give more to than the others? And they always were in conflict with that. Mm. So I can see how that would go in line with that because if this was their mindset <laughs> throughout their time walking with Christ, mm. can you imagine how they were feeling now that Christ is gone and now it's, they, they're not quite sure what's about to happen. Wow. The, the fact, that's a powerful point because mm. we, when we think of fear, sometimes I know sometimes I like kind of give fear a green pass because it's like, well, yeah, if you got a reason to be afraid, you're justified to be that way. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were they were in a tight spot, you know, their, their leader was just assassinated. So they're wondering, around like, man, are we next? We kind of feel like, oh, man, yeah, I feel bad for him. But we got to remember fear is a fleshly emotion. Mm -hmm. Fear is, is just as all putting to God as lust. Mm -hmm. It's just as all putting to God as anger. Mm -hmm. It's just as all putting as envy. So the fact that they were in a state of fear, it shows they were in their flesh, which means they were open up to all kinds of feelings. Mm -hmm. And in Thomas's case, because he wasn't there, the door was wide open for him to hate. The door was wide open for him to be like, he didn't come when I was there. Mm -hmm. So he has this going through his mind. So when he's responding, when you're reading this in verse 25, hopefully you're kind of seeing like, this is a guy who's not like in despair. This guy is actually bitter. He's mad. He's like, well, Except I see, the, 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 except I, it, it didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. He's kind of having that tone of voice that he has. So now Thomas is like this Sunday night. Remember mm -hmm. this was Sunday night. The disciples are all, they're all over the map emotionally. Mm -hmm. But look at verse 26. Verse 26 says, after eight days, again, his disciples were within. Now, when you're reading this, it would sound like, you know, like, they just left and for eight days, they just did whatever. Then eight days later, this happens. No, when they were huddled in that room, how are they feeling everybody? Afraid. They were afraid. You think they just went away on Monday morning? Like Monday morning, just woke up like, hmm, all right, well, I guess it's time to go back to fishing. <laughs> That's not what happened. They kept hiding out for a full week because they were that scared. Mm -hmm. And it says after eight days again, his disciples were within. They weren't out. They weren't preaching. They weren't lounging. They were still locked. They were on their own lockdown. Mm -hmm. Eight days, which also means, guess who was the same way eight days later? Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Now, he was bad Sunday night. At this point, eight days later, this is like Monday. Eight days later, at least, he's even more green. He's more ambitious because he's just been sitting there thinking all this time. I cannot believe because they didn't know if he was going to come back. Well, you can't forget, too, that they I'm sure they are talking about when they saw. They they, they mm -hmm. asked the Lord. They were all going on about talking about how, oh, did you see that? Da, da, da. And he's like, he's just burning even more. He's like, man, oh, and I with the nerve of him. So this is like a whole week. You know how you get, you know, how, let me just be, I know how I get when I'm mad. And if you let the sun go down on your wrath, just like the Bible says, don't do, how do you feel the next day? You feel even, even worse. It's even worse. 
when food is spoiled on Monday and you leave it in the same place, what's gonna happen on Tuesday? It's not just gonna be spoiled, it's gonna be right. more rot, more rotten. And it's in this point that they get a visitor. Mm. See, the whole point that we're making is Jesus knows how we feel. It says, and Thomas was with them, then came Jesus. Now, this is a miracle because what does verse 26 say? The doors being shut and he stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. So I incorrectly in my excitement, I said they heard a knock on the door. That's not what happened. They were all gathered there. Mm. Everybody's burning in fear or in jealousy or in all those seeds of emotions. And Jesus shows up. And what were the first words again out of Jesus's mouth? Peace. Be unto you. <laughs> Peace be unto you. Jesus knows when we're afraid. Mm -hmm. He knows when we're angry. He knows when we're jealous. He knows when we're struggling with lust. He knows that when we are so bent, broken, hurt, however you want to call it, mm -hmm. he knows. But look at what he says. First word, peace. Now, how do you know he knew everybody's mind and he knew Thomas's? He knew how Thomas felt. Because what does he say? Can you read faith? Verse 26, excuse me, 27. Then he saith, then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but be believing. <laughs> okay, so now why did Jesus say that? Why, why, why did Jesus tell, he said that specifically to Thomas. Why did he tell him? Why did he tell him to do that? Right. What did Thomas? He was doubting. What, what did Thomas say has to happen in order for him to believe? He would have to put his hands in the print of the nails. All right. In his hands and in his side. So Jesus knew this, and when did Thomas say that? Eight days before. A week and a day ago, mm -hmm. Thomas threw, he lobbed up a prayer. He didn't know he was praying. But he said, unless he does A, B, C, I won't believe. Hmm. Eight days later, Jesus comes and the Bible says he didn't say to the disciples. He said to Thomas specifically, reach hither your finger, behold my hands, reach hither your hand and thrust it into my, set, my side. He said exactly what Thomas said would be needed for him to believe. Don't doubt that when people pray that prayer, unless God does, da, 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 I, won't, I don't care if they're drunk, if they're high, if they're wasted, they could be living totally sold out. When you challenge God, and if it's sincere, and you say, I need you to do this in order for me to believe, he will do that if that's what it takes for you to believe. Why? Not because he's a little lap dog that we can just command, and not because we're gods ourselves but because he loves us. And the last part of this verse, he did this for Thomas in Thomas's time of frustration or jealousy or anger and fear. He said, do this and be not faithless, but believing. This is why I want you to do this. You said it, you said this is what you need. Now stop doubting and now start believing. Mm. This is a teacher. I, I mean, I can feel Jesus right now because this is what a good teacher does. A good teacher listens to the student, even in their frustration of not being able to get it or do it or accomplish it. They listen to their requests and a good teacher will honor that request so that that child can start going forward. Wow. Because that is what it takes. You have to eliminate whatever is creating the stopping of growth or the stopping of learning. And when you take care of that need or that desire or that lack, then they can move forward. Mm. And so Jesus is saying, I'm taking care of this in the way that you've asked me to take care of it, mm. in the way that you cried out for it to be taken care of. Now let's move forward mm. because it's going to take faith for you to move forward from this room wow. where you've been hiding. So I'm, I'm, you're locked up in this room, all y'all locked up, but especially you, Thomas, you're locked up in this room. I'm, I'm going to meet you where you are but I'm going to get you out of here. Mm -hmm. This is showing us how bad, how the burden that he has so that we can believe in him. Mm -hmm. You know, look here, look at the, look at the same story, but in another gospel in Luke chapter 24, we're talking about this one point 
Jesus knows how you feel. It says, as they thus spake in Luke 24, verse 36, excuse me, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. He said unto them, peace be unto you. Now look at what it says in verse 37. Can you please read that for us, Christara? What does verse 37 say? This is describing the, the, the apostles in the gospel of Luke. Mm. So the Bible split this this gospel says it straight out. They were terrified. They were affrighted. They thought that they had seen a spirit or a ghost. And look at what Jesus says in verse 38. He asked them a question. He said to them, why are you troubled? Mm -hmm. And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? They had never said anything. He just says, peace be unto you. 37 says they were terrified, afraid, and thought they'd seen a ghost. And Jesus, reading their mind, says, why are you thinking what you're thinking? See, he knows how we feel. Because a lot of times, the number one thing that is disrupting our peace is not what we're doing. It's not even what someone else is doing to us. It is how we're thinking. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, why are you thinking what you're thinking? And the only way somebody could say that is if they know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. He says, why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts, why are you letting this stuff arise in your hearts? So we look at the thought here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. See, blessed be the God and even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all what? Comfort. Mm -hmm. And where does Jesus comfort us? Who comforted us in all our tribulations. Jesus doesn't comfort us after we pass the test. Jesus doesn't want to just comfort us after the bill is paid. Jesus doesn't want to just comfort us after the operation. The Bible says he comforts us in our tribulation because he knows how we feel. Mm -hmm. We cannot let our thoughts or let our fear of our feelings run us away from turning to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He already knows. Mm -hmm. He knows and that's where he meets us. Mm -hmm. That's the first point that we want to see in our study today, everybody. Jesus knows how we feel. He knew how Thomas felt. He knew how the disciples felt. But guess what? Point number two. Point number two. Jesus always brings peace when he shows up. He always brings peace when he shows up. Um, Faith wants to write down these yes, points. Yes, get that note down. Jesus knows how we feel. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't let that stay <laughs> how we feel. Mm -hmm. Because it says... Jesus brings peace whenever he shows up. Let's go back to the story now in Luke. Now, this time, we're not going to go to Luke chapter 24. We're going to go to Luke chapter 2, which is kind of interesting. Go to Luke chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 9. This is Jesus showing up, but this is not after he is resurrected. This is him coming to the earth. It says in Luke chapter 2, beginning there in verse number 9. Could you read that for us, please, Tara? And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Let's pause there. Where are we now? We're near the end or the beginning of Jesus' time? End. The beginning. This is the beginning. Because we're talking about the angels and when they met the shepherds. Mm -hmm. Now, the shepherds were in their field watching their flocks by night, and guess what? When they started seeing stuff happening, what emotion shot up? What emotion went off the charts? They were afraid. It didn't just say that they were afraid. They were sore afraid. Mm -hmm. That means they were affrighted. They were terrified. They were incapacitated. They were so scared they could not move. Can you think about a time when you were that scared? You were in shock and you didn't know what to do. That's where they were. Mm -hmm. But look at what the angel says to them in verse 10. An angel, the angel said unto them, fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So what is his reaction to the shepherd's fear? Here he says, don't be afraid. I, I know you, I'm, you may be startled to hear what I'm about to say, but this is good news. If God was interested, if our heavenly father, if our creator was interested in wiping us out every time he talked to us, or interested in destroying us anytime he showed up, wouldn't this have been the time to have done it? Mm -hmm. No. But it didn't happen that way. He said, don't be afraid. 
because this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord, he is born. In fact, when he was saying this, look at what it says in verse 12, there'll be a sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. But they were so afraid and the angels were so excited they just broke out and start singing in verse 13. Suddenly, there was with that one angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, and they were saying what? Glory, Glory to God, God in the, the highest. highest. And on earth, peace. peace and goodwill toward men. They cut off the angel who had gotten like the, he got like the high job. He got the, the good job. He got the cherry job. You're going to go and tell them. Okay. And he was all happy, but they're all like in the background, like watching this happen. So he's like, relax guys. I'm here to tell you something. This is good news. You know, wake up. And so then they get the green light. I just imagine like the father gives them the green light. He you know, gives everybody a wink and they all burst out and they all come from behind the scenes and they start singing glory to God in the highest. And they all say the same thing. Mm -hmm. The same thing that one angel says, all of heaven is saying peace. Mm. So the angel says it on behalf of the father. The heavenly hosts say it on behalf of the father. Now you fast forward 33 and a half years later. And what's the first words that the resurrected Jesus says to his disciples? Peace. It's been peace from start to finish. Mm -hmm. That's why 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Mm -hmm. Not only does Jesus know how we feel, but from start to finish, all he's trying to give you is peace. All he's trying to bring to us is peace. All he wants for us is peace. This is, this is data. We've been talking about data. This is statistical data from the beginning, from even before he was born in the earth to even after he was resurrected, he's been saying the same thing to us. Mm -hmm. I'm here to bring peace, peace. Mm -hmm. This is the consolation. Titus chapter three, verse four says it this way. Can you read that one for us, Jayon? When try and read Titus chapter three and look there at verse number four, where it says, but after. Kindness. Kindness and love of God our Savior toward men as appeared. Good job. Yeah. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. See, the story of what we read there in Luke chapter 2, Jesus was just like the angels, just boom, like a flash of light. When he shows up in John chapter 20, remember, he does it not, he appears. And Titus says, after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. When he appeared, he had kindness, he had love for afraid disciples and a doubting Thomas. So sometimes you might think, well, maybe God only loves or maybe only God is kind or patient with those who are faithful and those who are vigilant and those who are strong. He's like that to them, but he's like that to people who are afraid. He's like that to people who are doubting. He's even like that to people who are envious, unjustifiably envious. Kindness and love are what appeared on that day. Mm -hmm. Eight days of unbelief. He said, I'm going to end it tonight with kindness and I'm going to end it with love. Jesus knows how we feel and he wants to bring peace to how we feel. Mm -hmm. Those are the two points. Here's the last one. Our three points to understand from this story is that number one, Jesus knows how we feel. Second thing we want to get from this story is that when he comes into our situation, he is always trying to bring peace when he shows up, whether it's by surprise, whether it's by you praying, mm -hmm. whether it's by a knock on the door, he always is going to bring, he's always going to bring peace. And lastly, this peace only, only comes from looking at our heavenly father through Jesus. This peace only comes and it will only remain if we keep our eyes on him. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the narrative. Let's go back to the story. This time looking at it in Luke chapter 24. Uh, what does he say there in Luke 24 verse 39? 
This way, he says, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. What does behold mean? Whenever you say that word behold in the Bible, what does it mean? Look, look, look to behold. So what does he tell Thomas to do? First thing first, after he gives him the peace, say peace. <laughs> now I need you to look. Look at my hands. Look at my feet, that it's I myself. The reason why he was doing that was because when Jesus was crucified, the Bible says he was speared. He was fastened through his hands and he was fastened through his feet on the cross. So what Jesus was telling Thomas to look at was to look at his scars, to look at the holes in his hands and the holes in his feet. But as he just stopped there, he doesn't just say, look, he goes on to say, handle me hmm. and see. So what does he mean when he's saying handle me? How do you handle something? Yeah, you're exactly. You can't see off camera, but Jael is handling the crayon. She's carrying. Come and show us around this way. How do you handle something? So you're handling the crayon. I don't know if she can be seen or not. She's handling the crayon, <laughs> which means she's holding it where? In her hand. And in order to hand, thank you, handle me. So what is Jesus asking us to do? He's saying, don't just look at me, but he's saying, touch me. Because mm -hmm. I can look at something. I have poor eyesight. Mommy has much better eyesight. I have contacts. You can't see them, but I have contacts. She does not. We can both look at the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like right now, like we're looking at the camera. But without my contacts, I would have to probably be about a good two feet closer than I am right now. Whereas with your good eyesight, you're like, what, three or four feet? You can actually go back further, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see, but we can all see from a distance. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of us who are looking at Jesus, but we're looking at him from a distance. And what's really sad is when we look at Jesus from a distance, and if you got eyes like me, <laughs> mm -hmm. where you say like, well, I, I know he's a God of love, but he only loves me this much. Well, I know he's a God of love, and if you're near nearsighted like me and stuff from far away gets blurry, you are seen through a glass darkly. Yes. And you have that kind of religion that's, you might have that seen through a gas dart. How do I know when I say, that's when you're trying to earn your salvation, which is just as bad as when you think you don't have it at all. Because when you think you got to earn your salvation, you're still going to end up in the same point. You're going to fail. All different ways that we can see from a distance. So Jesus says, I want to avoid that. I don't want you to see me through your mommy's testimony. I don't want you to see me through some book that somebody wrote about me. I want you, you know what? I just want you to touch me. I want you to handle me. Mm -hmm. I want us to get close enough that now, closer than you see in me, you're actually in contact with me. He says, behold and handle me and see. Because if you do this, you're going to find out a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Mm -hmm. There is something more that he has for us. And he says the only way to maintain and experience this peace is if you keep your eyes on me. And if you keep your hands on me, because when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. See, if you look at him, he'll show you more. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who say, well, Jesus, well, God doesn't speak to me. Well, have you ever asked yourself this question? Is the issue is that he's not speaking to you or the issue you're not listening? Mm -hmm. Because he says, when you look at me and if you touch me, I will actually show you more. Mm -hmm. I'll actually reveal more to you because you're looking at me. But why would he waste his time showing more when you're not looking? Because what will happen is the more you see when you're not looking, that's just more for you to not appreciate. It's just more for you to ignore. So I want to woo you and win you. Why would I give you more? I'll just lose you more. So he knows just how much. It's not a cat and mouse game. He's not playing with your emotions, but he knows your eyes and he knows your hands. And he knows that if I give you too much, you'll run away. And if I don't give you enough, you'll run away. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was just thinking about the disciples and those eight days. Of unbelief. <laughs> mm. um, and one thing they didn't, just in line of what you're just saying, one thing they did not realize is that Christ was still with them. Wow. 
he (laughs) was still with them Mm -hmm. even in the midst of this trial in the midst of this fear that they were feeling even in the midst of his absence his physical absence Mm -hmm. he was still with them and he watched them and he was with them and he waited until the very moment where it was the right time for them to receive him again for him to give them the message of peace again because i think it's sometimes it's 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 a point of we know christ we know his power we know what he's able to do but we forget that he's with us Mm. we forget that he's right there with us Mm. and we tend to take our minds off of that when we take our minds off of the fact that he is with us our peace goes with that so in an effort to to do as he was inviting them to do we cannot mistake to to take what you're saying to summarize what you were saying don't mistake God's presence as only activity. Mm-hmm. In other words, the only way I know that you're here is if you're doing something. Mm-hmm. But like, like right now, like we're all uh, being a part of this study and some of us are physically doing something. Others are not doing anything, but we're still together. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we can mistake that. Well, the only way I know you're here is if you're doing something. Well, sometimes I'm here. And I'm not actually doing something that you can see that you can see, Mm -hmm. but I'm here. I think another thing too, is, um, trying to connect all the dots with Christ Mm -hmm. as we connect the dots with Christ. You, you brought, you took us from his birth to his, um, the time after his resurrection, Mm -hmm. all those times of the disciples being with Christ, he was teaching them something that he was hoping would resonate and take root in their hearts and minds. Mm. But that time of trial revealed what they really accepted, Mm. what they really took in and accepted and learned, and it became a part of who they were. And, And then with them losing all that Christ had given them, the time on the storm, the Sea of Galilee, when he told them, why were you afraid when I'm with you? When he said, let not your heart be troubled. All these times when Christ kept reminding them of what would happen and how you should behave and what you should believe and that I am with you and the promise that he gave of the comforter coming when he would go away. All these things he was hoping that would stay with them. But when he appeared the first time, he gave them back their peace. Mm -hmm. They had lost it. Mm -hmm. For eight days, they lost their peace again because they forgot who was with them. They Mm -hmm. forgot the promises that Christ left with them. Mm -hmm. So he returned again after Mm -hmm. those eight days and gave peace back to them and said, peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. He said it again. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, and I want to bring it home to us here, we tend to forget all that we have learned that Christ wants us to remember. And when hard times come or when times come, when we feel like things are not going the way that we thought it should go, we tend to throw everything out the window and we forget the things that he taught us. Mm-hmm. We forget all that he gave us to keep us in our time of trial and our time of testing that peace. Mm-hmm. And that peace goes with all of those lessons because we don't hold on to it. Mm. And we have to remember that as Jesus is taking us day by day, teaching us from various experiences, teaching us when we open up the word and we're learning different things, he's trying to get us to make a bank. Just, just, just file it away and don't let go of it because when times come to test your faith, When time, you can draw from that. Mm. You can actually draw from that and have peace that I will bring you through the roughest of times. I will bring you through the worst trials that you can experience, but we can have peace. Mm. We can have confidence in knowing that if Christ is with me, no matter what comes up, I'm good. There's a good verse for us as we bring this home. And I have um, a story to share. Okay, cool. Because mm-hmm. in Ephesians chapter two, these are some words to put in our bank. These are some words to encourage us. Ephesians chapter two, we're going to look at verses four through seven. Look at what the word says. The word says, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy 
for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Here is the real point, verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show, he might reveal, he might teach us, he might give us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Mm. This is where we get word bank. We get, we get real faith that is, is from an experience that's really this right here. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is good things, kind things, positive things, whatever word you want to call it, call it or as you want to give it, those are tokens that he's given us to let us know you can have peace. Mm -hmm. There are, there are, there are so many of us and it's easy to say, you know, every turn in life has been bad until you meet that person. You know, it's like the person complaining about the hole in their shoe. So they meet the person who has one foot. And then it's like the person who has one foot complaining until they meet the person who has no legs. Mm -hmm. And then it's about the person complaining about not having any legs until they meet the person at a funeral who has no life. All of our circumstances are relative. And it does not mean that what you've been through is not bad. It does not mean that what has happened to you is not something to complain about. But God, who is rich in mercy, mm -hmm. for his great love wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead in sins, you're getting the point? Going on to now verse seven, it's still saying, even after all that, he wants to show us the exceeding riches of his grace. So no matter how bankrupt your yesterday has been, your future is going to be rich in Christ. No matter how much or what you've done, even if you're hating, if you're jealous, if you're fearful, right in the moment, Jesus will show up and say, hey, peace. Yes. Let's get you out of this situation. Let's get you to a place that I want you to be in. Hmm. And that's the kind of place he wants us to be in. You said you had a story you wanted to share. Yeah, it's just to illustrate all that we're talking about. Um, there was a king. Mm. And a king wanted uh, a certain portrait, uh, an art piece that would portray peace. And so P-E-A-C-E, -E, he wanted an art piece mm. to portray <laughs> peace. And so he... P-I-E-C-E, -E, to portray P-E-A-C-E. -E. Yes. yes. And so he called for all the artists to come and bring um, their greatest uh, artwork uh, that would portray this perfect picture of peace. And so yeah, many, many pieces coming in from great artists. And uh, some of them showed a, a, a serene stream, a, a pond, a lake. Some were snow-capped mountains and trees that went for forever, on and on. And there was one picture of a mountain and this mountain would just look so serene, so peaceful. But the king didn't choose any of the pictures that everyone thought that he would choose. He chose the art piece that looked the opposite of serenity or peace. It was of a mountain, but it was a bare, rugged mountain. And the day was a stormy day dark clouds and they all asked why this one this one looks like a storm this one looks like a terrifying picture but he said if you look closely the king said i could see on the cleft of the mountain a green bush a green bush with a bird's nest and in that nest was a mama bird sitting on her eggs just watching the storm and he said and that is a picture of peace mm -hmm. when we realize when we're in christ we can watch the storms all around us mm -hmm. but we know where we sit mm -hmm. we know where we are safe 
even in the midst of a storm. And if a mama bird can teach us a lesson on peace, then we surely can learn a lesson on the one who wakes us up every single morning, mm. the one who provides food for us every single day. Mm. When we go through life's trials, when we go through the hardest of times, we are to understand and know that we have a mountain, a rock that we can find ourselves snuggled safe within it. Mm. And that's Christ. Mm. Christ is our rock. And even though the storms of life are all around us, and even when the sun is shining, mm. but the mountain is still bare, we can still find peace in Christ. We can still find that peace in Christ. You know, we have a special treat today that we hope will really let us get in the nest that will help us. You know, it's interesting. The word nest is, is very close to the word rest. And so what we're going to do is we're going to review just to review the three points that we studied today. The three points we want to make sure that you leave with and you take with you. And those points are remembering number one, when it comes to the belief Excuse me, eight days of unbelief. That's not the slide I did. My apologies. Remembering these three points. The first point is this. Jesus knows how we feel. The second point is this. Jesus always brings peace when he shows up. And last but not least, peace can only come from looking at our Heavenly Father through Jesus. We got a special treat for you today, and we're going to have Faith and Jael come and share a song and hopefully teach a song you've never heard of before that will let you know that there is peace in Christ. They've also been blessed enough to learn the hand motions to the song, and these are actual ASL. These are not homemade hand praise songs <laughs> or signs, but these are actual ASL, American Sign Language signs, and we hope will encourage your heart and let you know that there is peace in Christ. If there's anything you all wanted to share before you sing, that's fine too. Okay. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Oh, yeah, okay. Good afternoon. Oh, good, good afternoon. So the name of the song that we're going to be singing and signing to is called Peace. There is peace in Christ. There is peace in Christ when we learn of Him. Feel the love He felt for us when he bought our sins listen to his words let them come alive if we know him as he is there is peace in Christ he gives us storms of life when there's no peace on earth there is peace in Christ he gives us hope when hope is gone he gives us In the 
storms of life when there's no peace on earth. There is peace in Christ when there's no peace on earth. There is peace in Christ. Well done. Stay there. Stay there. Praise the Lord. Well, I am going to borrow your microphone just in case. Make sure everybody can be heard. But that was a blessing. We hope that you all enjoyed our time together that we had during Change Fellowship today. And the whole point is that we want everyone to find peace in Christ because that's how we're finding our peace. And it's the only place we can find it. In fact, we want to pray with everybody now. Let's pray, girls. Thank you, Jesus, for just a reminder that there is peace in you. Thank you, Father, that you sent your son, that we would understand that you are the God of peace and that you want us all to not be afraid. You don't want us to stay in this sea of bitterness or disappointment, despair or hopelessness, but you want us to have peace in every other fruit of your presence. And so we pray for forgiveness when we have been made prisoners um, in our feelings of fear and faithlessness. And we pray that you would also forgive us when we have been someone who's brought that lack of peace or who's robbed others of their peace by our actions or what we've done. But thank you, Jesus, that today all of us can stand atoned and all of us can stand changed in you and that now we can walk and rest in peace. So please be with every family that's watching from everything that we've talked about from the beginning with Change Health to what we saw in the study this afternoon. Help us to recognize that the goal of all of your word is to bring us to a point of peace. Please lead us in it until we see your face and we will be able, wow, we'll be able to touch your hands, touch your feet, touch your side, and see this is the one who went through all of this just so that we could have peace. So until that day, Jesus, we're gonna trust you. Thank you. In your name, to our Father, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Good job, girls. We always are thankful anytime we're able to be together on camera and share. So we do pray by God's grace that you will be with us next Sabbath and we'll learn more, do more, and in fact, we'll be closer to Jesus' return. So until then, God bless everybody and uh, have a happy Sabbath. Now you can say your byes and happy Sabbath. You want to say your byes and happy Sabbath? <laughs> Remember, there is peace in Christ, and you did a good job. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Have an amazing week.